delivered one of the worst loss of the season for the Boston Red Sox. And it was glorious. And by the way, I believe that Alex Cora and Jeff Luno are best buds. In fact, here is a little note that uh, they sent today. So Alex Cora loves Jeff Luno. And we'll talk about this and more on today's Locked on Astros podcast, which starts right now. It's the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome to Locked On Astros, your daily Astros podcast. Here are your hosts, Eric the Man Heisman and Brett H-Town Wheelhouse Chansey. What a glorious day to be at the ballpark, and we are Locked On Houston Astros, and we hope that you join us for a daily Locked On Astros podcast. My name is Eric Heisman. You can find me on Twitter at Eric Talk Stros. You can find the show at Locked On Astros, your team every day. Brett, where can they find you at? They can find me at H-Town Wheelhouse on Twitter and at Stros411 on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Always positive, always Stros. The Astros finally found a lead that the bullpen – couldn't blow it with, and it was a glorious lead. We'll talk about this and more on today's Locked On Astros podcast. Today's episode is brought to you by Rock Auto. It's amazing selection, reliably low prices, all the parts your car will ever, ever need. Visit rockauto.com and tell them that the Locked On Astros podcast sent you by. So this was a weird crowd today. Uh, I saw people wearing Astros jerseys and Red Sox hats, and I'm like, Pick a side. What, what the heck's going on there? But there's a, a it was a much subtle uh, crowd. You didn't have, I don't, at least I didn't see any fighting or anything. I didn't see any arguing. I didn't see anything like that. I, it's just like, I guess it's a, the two fan bases that were allegedly cheated and everything. So uh, I think that this was a, uh, a, a bunch of um, fans that are just here to watch baseball play. And these are two of the better teams in baseball. I know the A's would say, Hey, we're still up there, but hey, the A's lost today. So the Astros are only a half game behind you. Hey, 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 we're coming. We're coming to get you. Yeah, that's right. It was it was a great game today. Um, it, this is a third starter in a row to come off of the IL and have an excellent outing. And I think he topped the other two today. Eric, he was performing just calm, cool, collect like he had never he never missed a beat, you know, going into the fifth inning. He had that no hitter, and um, it was it was a it, it was a really sharply hit ball to right field, and it was great to see Urquidy do that. But it was also great to see the offense pick them up and the offense to do. I mean, that was a fun game to be at. Um, you know, being at the game, being at a day game um, in the middle of the week was it was definitely a different vibe but the crowd got into it and it was like yes let's just keep piling on the runs let's keep scoring runs because we've got a bullpen and if Urquidy ever leaves the game we've got to have a huge pad so that we don't have this thing blown wide open like we did against San Diego yeah Ian Brown says uh, I think he covers the Red Sox he says game four of the 2018 ALCS was the most compelling game I've ever covered and he's, he said, today's game, I'm not going to even mention how this ranks. And he said, this was by far the worst game of the season for the Red Sox. So henceforth, that's where the title comes from. I did not make that up as Astros fan. That was coming from uh, the one of the beat writers for the Red Sox. So uh, this was a, I know that Gabrielle Starr of the Locked on Red Sox podcast, he came out. And uh, she came out yesterday and kind of uh, predicted this. She said, yeah, this is probably going to be the game that you're going to win because Eduardo Rodriguez is, uh, has struggled. And uh, so this is probably the game you're going to win. And so I asked her, are you okay? She said, I told you all this was going to happen. So um, what Jose Urquidy did was this offense, the Red Sox offense, is just so dynamic. I know the Astros have the better batting average but they don't have the OPS that the Red Sox does. And for him to do what he did, and I know we were at the game, we were talking about the swings the Red Sox were taking. It just looks like they had no clue. It just looked like 
he was up there throwing just a like a, a visible ball, a wiffle ball, and he was just up there like they had no clue. He threw six innings, only allowed three hit, the one run, one walk, and nine strikeouts. And I apparently he was he was throwing up there. Um, that I guess the nineteen days off really helped him because he was he upped his fastball. He was at, he threw a couple ninety five mile per hour fastballs, and he had more oomph on his pitches and. I guess this was uh, facing a team like the Red Sox uh, maybe brings out the best in him. And he just was glad to be back on the mound for Houston Astros. No, Yeah, it's like Steve Harden said, we finally got to watch a game without hyperventilating. Um, you know, the fans are recognizing, hey, it was nice to get off work and find that we won 11 to 2. I can be happy now. Um, you know, um, baseball is one of those sports where things are come and go, things are hot or cold. And with this team, with the unpredictability, you've got one of the highest batting averages, one of the most potent offenses, but yet you find ways to lose games. It's just frustrating. Um, Texas Sports TV says uh, triple, he said triple tuck, my man, got three hits and four RBIs. Let's go. That's right. That It was a, it was a great game by um, Kyle Tucker, um, you know, and not to just, you know, not to just talk about that, but Jose Altuve's laser shot to left field Crawford boxes. Yeah, um, it bounced over. I, I don't think I've seen one that hit the top of the wall and just, yeah. And just down. kept going. Yeah. But, but um, you, you had mentioned you and I were talking about that during the game where the Red Sox bats were, they were way late and they just weren't seeing the ball well out of Urquidy's hand. And for the pitcher, that's what you want. And when Arkady goes out there, he doesn't ever look concerned about anything ever. Like almost too passive, but you know he cares. Um, I've likened him to just like a bulldog mentality. He just goes out there. He looks at the glove. He looks at the sign. He throws the ball. And then he lets the rest take command. And that was just a phenomenal performance. Nine strikeouts in his outing today coming off the I.L., I mean, you couldn't have asked for a better game other than completing a no-hitter, right? Yes. Uh, yeah, I agree with you. And uh, if you look at the Red Sox lineup, I know that uh, they have J.D. Martinez, Rafael Devers, and Xander Bogarts. Are all, they all have OPS of 900 or above. And the Astros, they may have one, maybe two, that, uh, that have OPS above 900. So um, this was a dangerous lineup for him to limit them to only one run and for the bullpen to only limit them to one run, that was impressive. Uh, Paredes came in. He looked dynamic. He only pit through 18 pitches and had struck out the side. And then you had um, – uh, who was the other guy who came in today? It was um, – You talking uh, about R Rodriguez? Yes, Rodriguez. And he came in, and he did give up the run. He did give up uh, uh, the home run. He did give up another, another hit. He had a – but he he still got the job done, I guess. Um, he if you're if you're watching that game, you would have to take a shot. I, I think we need to create a game every time that your bullpen gives up a shot, a run, you have to give up, you have to take a shot or something. This is like what six, five or six straight games that the Astros bullpen has given up a home run, and so um, this is this is not good. This is something that makes you want to drink, and I know that's something that we talked about in yesterday's podcast. So. I don't want to keep on going that, that thread, but that's basically what has to happen. So um, I know Albert says that Jose Kitty kind of reminds you of Mike Hampton. Yeah, that's what you were saying earlier. It's a bulldog yeah. mentality, and that's what he brings to this. And I, I don't have any complaints about this uh, this game. I think everything from the start, from beginning, they scored early. They kept on scoring. They did exactly what they were supposed to do. And uh, it, it was just a great game. And um, Jose um, Altuve, his homer was uh, number 140 for him, and uh, that that passed him uh, from Bob Watson for 100. Uh, Bob Watson has 139 on the club's all-time list, so uh, he passes him. So this this was a big moment for Jose Altuve and a big moment for the Astros to not only to uh, beat the Red Sox who were who had 32 wins, as Gabrielle mentioned on yesterday's podcast, but to show that they're not a they're a team that you need to give credit to. So speaking of credit, let's talk about what Credit Karma could do for you. 
Yeah. Um, you know, Credit Karma has always been there to help you make better financial decisions. Now they want to help you even more. With Credit Karma Money Spend Account, you can be rewarded for good money habits. Who doesn't want instant gratification? If you're looking for satisfaction, there's no need to wait. With Credit Karma Money, you can win cash reimbursements for debit purchases. When you use your Credit Karma Money debit card, you can win daily instant karma purchase reimbursements on items up to $5,000. Just pay with your debit card, and if you win, you'll be notified on the spot, and your instant karma cash will be added back to your spend account. Credit Karma Money has already given away $3 million in instant karma to over 50,000 Credit Karma members and counting. Open your FDIC-insured spend account for free. There's no minimum balance required, no overdraft fees, no withdrawal fees from a network of over 50,000 ATMs. Credit Karma Money progress starts here. Right now, visit creditkarma.com forward slash win money to open the free account and start winning instant karma. Go to creditkarma forward slash win money to sign up for free to start winning instant karma. That's creditkarma.com slash win money. Instant Karma is sponsored by Credit Karma. No purchase necessary. Exclusions and terms apply. See rules, banking services provided by MVP Bank Incorporated. Member FTIC, maximum balance and transfer limits apply. All righty, let's talk about Rock Auto. Rock Auto, if you want to get to the game like we did and get there fast, but you're like, oh my gosh, I need new windshield wipers because it might rain on the way there because it's always raining in Houston, go to rockauto.com. That's right. If you want to wipe away the haters, go to rockauto.com. If you want to put the brakes on the Boers, go to rockauto.com. Rock Auto has been owned by, own is family owned, has been around for 20 years, has an easily navigable website. You can find the parts, just put the year, the make, the model, whether it's a minivan, whether you're driving an F-150, it doesn't matter. They have all your needs right there taken care of. Better, better yet, they deliver to your doorstep. You don't have to go to a store. They're not going to charge you different prices. If you were not a professional mechanic like myself or Eric, they will charge you the same. Save 30, 50, sometimes 100% what you would pay in a store. So right now, go to rockauto.com, find that part. And then when you get to the how did you hear about us box, put locked on in the how did you hear about us. That way they know that we sent you. We're telling you we have experience with rockauto.com. We have other hosts that have experienced rockauto.com saving us gobs of money. So remember this amazing selection, reliably low prices, all the parts your car will ever need, rockauto.com. All right, so I know that Jay Roberts mentioned that there are a lot of Red Sox fans at the ballpark. Yes, there were, and I'm, we mentioned that at the start of the podcast, and I do agree that they were very quiet. They were very respectful, and I, I mentioned that maybe it's because we were both uh, technically cheaters, uh, that we were both technically caught. And But I think Red Sox are um, – I mean, we didn't technically cheat. The, I mean, I – I guess technically we did, um, if you want to look at them, but look at because we did beat them in that that uh, playoffs. Um, well, I'll just I'll just say this: I think the Red Sox fans as a whole. Now, I haven't met a lot of Dodgers fans in person that are like the ones you see that get the headlines, but I've interacted with Boston fans for a long time because of the whole New England Patriots thing and playing the Texans and all that stuff. And Boston fans seem like they're hardcore passionate. But they're like, they'll be your buddy. They'll be your friend any day of the week. LA's got a different mindset. LA's got that kind of like, we're LA, you're not. More of a, yeah, more like, more like an elitist type mindset. Yeah. Um, Boston's more blue collar like we are. And so, you know, hey, you know, I mean, Boston, you know. Yeah. Yeah, we heard we heard some fans outside, like Astros and Red Sox fans as we were going out the door. So, so how many championships do y'all have? And uh, we we heard the country the country accent and we heard the Boston accent out there and so th they're ha they're having conversation and they they weren't out there like yelling at each other well we have the so it it was I th yeah, I do agree that they're a different fan base so um so I think that there is a lot of hate out there in uh in L A and I don't think that's gonna go and and far any away anytime soon. So I know before the show, I kind of did, uh, I lost the other part, but um, Alex Cora does not love Jeff Luno. Uh, let me just go and say that. Why? Because basically in the whole report, and I guess in the um, letter, uh, I guess, it, I don't know if you, it's a letter, but it's the thing that um, Jeff Luno sent out that said the bench coach or something that he was kind of called out by Jeff Luno. 
that's the thing that kind of um, that Alex Cora was not appreciative of, that he basically called him out out of all people. He said, I think of the whole report, the way Jeff talked about myself, just saying the bench coach, that really bothered me. Obviously, I don't know what was said in the investigation. I know what I said and what I went through. And it's what it is. I got suspended. That's something that will always be on my resume. And I think at the end, we all make made a mistake. We all messed up. And we all are paying the price. So what he's saying is that he doesn't appreciate the fact that uh, Jeff Luno was trying to get away with it by just throwing the bench coach under the bus. And he, he and uh, Cora said, I'm not afraid to talk about it. It's part of who I am. It's part of my present and it's part of my past. It's going to be part of my future. It's not something I'm part of about, but at the same time, I've got a job to do and it's my job to manage the Boston Red Sox and hopefully get back to the World Series. So I like the fact that Cora is not afraid to really kind of, um, he's not afraid to, he's not going to just hide behind, um, well, we've, we've already talked about this. He's actually willing to address it, but at the same time, he doesn't want to say too much because he really can't. Yeah, exactly. Um, Albert Flores asked, what's what's to do with Castro? Well, this is why he went on the 10-day IL. Um, he basically has a left Achilles soreness, um, and that's why he was put on. It was retroactivated to May 25th, and so that's why he is on the IL. And if you have Achilles soreness, that's not good, especially being in the catching position that long in the game. So that's what's up with Jason Castro. So 10 day IL means probably June 4th or 5th. He's expected to come back. I would assume. Yeah. And I think uh, Jim Crane is looking at everybody in his uh, front office. He's like, this is why we, we purchased the Sugarland Skeeters or we, we made this agreement because look at all the plane travel we saved and all the time. Cause look at all the moves they've made. Um, just well, like, and I mean, and the players, I mean, the players don't have to leave home. The players right. don't have to make arrangements. I mean, it's, it's so convenient. It just makes sense. Yeah. So there were some roster moves uh, Blake Taylor was activated before today's game. He did not appear in today's game, but he was activated. And uh, also Jose Arquiti was activated and who got sent down. So they sent down Andre scrub and, um, uh, who else did they say? Oh my gosh, you would ask me. And I actually told you who it was earlier. I know Andre Andre Scrub is a guy I couldn't remember right. earlier. And try and see if you remember the other no, guy. Just go ahead and tell me because it's dead air. Go. <laughs> you don't know. Come on, uh, man. It, it was um it was Ralph Garza. Okay, Ralph Garza. Ralph Garza yeah. Jr. That's right. Okay. Right. Yeah, it was funny. I was like, I, I remember Ralph Garza <laughs> when we were talking about it during the game, and then I couldn't remember Andre Scrub. It's all good. So Garza and Scrub got sitting down. Scrub Scrub hasn't looked great lately, and so maybe go down and fix some things mechanically. He's got enough up up and down moves. So yeah. So um, yeah. So I know uh, a lot of people are are not high on Scrub. I think Scrub can be a really valuable weapon for the Houston Astros. It's just not right now. I think he's struggling right now, and I don't know how to fix him. Maybe with time, we can bet on him. But right now, I just don't think anybody can bet on him, especially after those three straight walks the other day. So speaking of betting, let's talk about betonline.ag. Yeah, bet online is the fastest and easiest way to bet on all your sports action. Baseball season is here in full swing. I mean, the Astros have three more games against the Red Sox. You can go bet to see if you think the Astros will actually sweep or 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 what Astros pitcher will throw a no-hitter against them or will Jordan Alvarez get in the game anytime soon. Whatever it is you want to bet on, NBA playoffs, NHL is going in full swing, UFC, MMA, they've got you covered. So before the next pitch of the Astros game, head over to Bet Online on your laptop or mobile device and check out all the great sporting news, sign up bonuses and contest information. Don't sit on the sidelines anymore as this is your chance to get into the game as teams prep for their runs for the playoffs. Head to the website to use your mobile device to sign up today and receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet online, your online sportsbook experts, promo code locked on. Uh, Tony wants to know about Ken Emanuel. I honestly have not seen any updates on Ken Emanuel. I know it was something to do with his el elbow. I, I last I saw, they were getting update. They're they're getting him looked at. I have not seen any updates. If anybody have seen any updates, let me know. But I've uh, haven't really been. I haven't seen anything. So 
but hopefully we'll hear something, but, um, we'll, yeah, he's, we'll, he's getting a second opinion right now yeah. on his left elbow. So that's, yeah, that's, that's I mean, not, that's, that's not a good. good thing. No, that's, that's not a good thing at all. Right. So I'm not going to, I don't want to speculate. I don't like to speculate about that type of stuff, but um, I'm just really glad that the Astros came and took care of business today and really, really took care of business. And let's talk a little bit about what Kyle Tucker has been doing recently. He's batting 333 with a 409 on base, 654 slugging with six homers, 19 RBIs in the past 20 games. <laughs> this is a kid. Remember, I remember going to a game and one of the season season ticket holders talking to me like, uh, you would know uh, what's going on to Kyle Tucker. I'm like, just give him a chance. He's making good contact. It's just going to take time. Um, mm -hmm. So, uh, and he, he found contact and Carlos Cray on Kyle Tucker. To me, he's just a slow starter, but once he figures it out, he's going to be one of the best hitters out there right now. He's on fire. He is. And he, again, he is my guy that I picked to be the Astros offensive MVP. And I know people are like, well, I wouldn't put him above Bregman break, you know, and this is something we haven't talked about coupled with, with Kyle Tucker is Bregman has started out hot. Bregman is a, is a traditionally slow starter and Bregman has been in the top 10, um, you know, MLB for, for average and, you know, various other categories. And you have on top of that, Kyle Tucker's average just keeps going up and up and up. And can you imagine had he had a hot start, he would probably be fourth or fifth in the league right now, right. batting average wise, but he is absolutely smoking the ball. He is hitting it well. He's seeing it well. Um, and man, he's fast, dude. He's fast around the base pass. Um, he's doing really good in the outfield. Um, you know, all that, remember all the criticism he got when he first came up, Oh, he looks lazy. He looks like he doesn't care. Oh, he doesn't, you know, he swings so daintily and he, he just jogs in the outfield and it's like, no, just, you know, give the kid time. Like, like chill out, like, like step off a little bit. Kyle Tucker, there's a reason the Astros never traded him away and you're starting to see that. Yeah. So, uh, Felipe wants us to, uh, wants to know how we see this, the series going. We kind of talked about it yesterday, I know I said split. I'm still leaning towards split. I may go more three one, but uh, I I kind of saw. I wouldn't. Uh, I wouldn't disagree with that at all. Yeah, I, I kind of saw them taking game one. Um, I think that um, I, I want to say that they're they're gonna lose at least one of these games. I'm not really sure exactly which game. Uh, the Red Sox, after being embarrassed today, they're gonna come out tomorrow. And they're going to really come out uh, blaring. So uh, we'll have to look at that matchup in a second. But uh, it's they're going to lose one of these games. But with the way the offense was clicking today, and they're doing it without Alvarez, without Griel in the lineup, that's impressive. If to get 13 hits and score, this is the first time since, what, May 14th that the Astros have done this. And Ian Brown, I'm probably giving him way too much um credit today but um he he said the red sox did not want to be part of this uh joyous occasion <laughs> so uh but uh yeah so tomorrow's matchup is gonna be who it's gonna be we talk it's gonna be garrett richards versus luis garcia yeah so garrett richards has always been really tough versus the astros so that's well that's, right. that's gonna be a tricky one but this is not Old school Garrett Richards. This is but 2021 this is, Garrett Richards. Yeah, but also this is one of the top offenses that came in here to Houston. Um, you had J.D. Martinez, like you said, Devers. Um, Z, you know, you know, Xander Bogarts has been all world this year, and 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 Urquidy shut him down on his first start off of his IL stint, and so it is. It is great. It is. It is great to see see that happening. And I easily see me switching my prediction from two, two to three, one after today. Maybe I'm a little overly confident because of what I sweep? witnessed. Didn't you say sweep? No, I did not. I was joking with the sweep. Remember I said the Astros are going to sweep and hit like 15 home runs in the first three games. I was oh, not okay. being realistic and I was not okay. smacked out of my mind or drunk. So, um, because I don't <laughs> do that. Um, anyway, so, you know, here, <laughs> yeah, no, I, one or two beers a day, <laughs> if, if that, okay. But, um, you know, some, someone was asking, I don't know how many days, how many day to days you can go without having to put them on, on the IL. Yeah. I was, I was, they're not hurt enough. Offense. They're not hurt enough. I mean, right. You, you can't play with a short 
bench for too long for, before it starts hurting. I know the Astros are a game, I mean, a half game behind the A's, but eventually it's going to catch up with you. I mean, they eventually, they had to put somebody on the IL. They put Michael Brantley on the IL. I forgot about him, but uh, when we're talking about who we don't have in the lineup, but Taylor Jones, Taylor Jones was hitting, he was getting some hits today. He almost hit a grand slam today. It's, yeah. It wasn't as close as uh, Chaz, Chaz, Chazzy Fizzle or whatever. Um, Chazzy uh, Fizz. <laughs> Chazzy Fizz as, um, as um, uh, that, I think Twitter. that, yeah. That's the Twitter handle, yeah. But uh, it wasn't as close as his was the other day, but it was, that the crowd would have gone wild if that would have happened today. But um, overall, it was a great, great game today. And um, yeah, Taylor Jones was part of the offense. He was part of the reason why the Astros won today's game. And uh, Brett and I were talking about like, how tall is this dude? And Brett looked it up. He's six, seven. And uh, when he got tagged out at third base, I'm, uh, Brett's like, why do you get tagged out? I'm like, he's got a big body <laughs> to be tagged out with. So that's why he got tagged out. So um, so I, yeah, I, I think that if they're going to lose a game, I would say they're probably going to lose tomorrow's game because Garrett Richards has, um, played pitched good against them in the past. And the Red Sox are going to come out and be like, look, you don't embarrass us. So. Well, like Ron Burgundy, I don't believe you. I don't believe that. <laughs> I think they're going to win tomorrow. I think I, I agree with Johnny. Check this out. Um, Astros winning tomorrow again because Garcia is just like Rikidi. Attacks the strike zone and throws a ton of strikes. Yes. And someone put up on Twitter today. I don't know who it was. You're like, hey, oh, my gosh, an Astros pitcher throwing strikes. And so um, it's nice. And it's amazing what throwing strikes, pounding the strike zone will do for you, um, especially if they're not seeing the ball well. Um, it was a, it was a great crowd. It was a great offensive output. It was supported by the pitching and we didn't need to rely on the bullpen. And this is good, though. This is good because maybe those bullpen guys in between games, in between you know being out there before the game, after the game, are able to work on some things. Maybe they're able to look and examine some film of where they're missing spots or what they're doing with their release point and different things like that. So um, it's good to give these guys a rest. And um, I really think the Astros can come out and win tomorrow. I think, Eric, you're going to – you're going to be at the game again tomorrow. You're like going to two games in a row, man. Keep, yeah, keep and that maybe luck. If I get a press pass for Thursday, I may be going to that game. So we'll see. What, uh, what you didn't tell, hold on. You're like, you, you're, so you're holding out on me. Yeah. I didn't know you had all these. Uh, I wow. said, may I applied for it. So it doesn't mean I'm going to actually get it's it. It's all so. good. It's all good. Yeah. Pradis, uh, Pradis looked really good. We talked yeah. about that earlier and he did it on 18 pitches. Uh, so his one day in Sugarland, he rediscovered things, but. <laughs> No, with him, he's always had this stuff. It just, he, he got wild. Um, and so sometimes just getting sent down is just like a slap in the face. And so maybe that's all he needed to kind of get well, back on touch. He has, he has one of those motions, Eric, that you have got to control it. And if you don't control it, you, I mean, he has a tendency to be wild because of the way he throws. It's not your traditional up and down leg slide step to the plate. It's very, I mean, his, it's very, it's very wild and having to, and having to basically harness all that power that he's bringing with the herky jerky, almost motion. It's not traditional. Right. He's got to stay within himself. And if he can stay mentally within himself, I think he's fine. I think he gets it between his ears and that's when he starts getting wild. Uh, Albert says he's a nervous pitcher. Uh, maybe yeah. that's kind of going what you said. So yeah. Um, anyway, so there's a there's a lot for us to discuss, but I'm 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 excited to see what happens tomorrow. I think the Astros' offense, if they continue to do what they did today, um, Garrett Richards uh, is is a nemesis of the past, but that is the past. This is the future. This is a different team. So maybe they can uh, get out of what the past and focus on today. Speaking of the today, why don't you check out the Locked On Today podcast? It's get, get all the news you need in under 20 minutes with the Locked On Today podcast. Host Peter Bukowski updates you with all the latest news in every major sport with the help of the local experts. Follow the Locked On Today podcast on the Odyssey app or wherever you get your podcast. And that would be, do it for this podcast. Thank you, everybody tuning in. I know we just had a whole bunch of people just tune in right now. But that's all we got for tonight's Locked On Astros podcast. Make sure you tune in tomorrow. Hopefully we have another great win and Ghost Rose. And let's get another W versus the Red Sox tomorrow.